shares a flat with Carl Frampton when they're both in camp in Bolton. Things have been different recently for obvious reasons. And Ward with the quiet man on the back of the shorts there. White socks, black shorts. Balau with the black and yellow shorts and red socks. And Ward just looking to try and chop down with that right hand. He's into a second phase of his career here, Barry, and this is absolutely critical because he did well enough at light heavyweight. He won the WBO European title, but he just couldn't make the weight anymore. He did box at heavyweight, which is basically the cruiserweight limit as an amateur, but felt that he was a small amateur heavyweight, so came down in weight rather than stay there. You can get stuck between two weights if you're the kind of size that Ward is quite yeah. easily and that's not a good thing yeah you can and also you think you, know, you think if you can even remotely make the weight that's a just a box of psyche there you will try and get down to the the lowest weight you possibly can and you know, he, he technically very good Stephen Ward there was always a question about the lack of power but maybe that was to do with maybe you know just obviously he, I don't think he's he blessed with with kale kale punch but I think maybe with the vision now looking at him here nice and healthy that's a good shot there from Valau Oh, good right hand there, back from Ward. Nice long, straight shot. And it's an entertaining opening round this so far because, as I mentioned at the start, Jonah Palau is not the kind of person who's going to slide through those ropes, hear the first bell, and, and leave at the end of the fight wondering what might have happened if he'd thrown some shots because that's just not what he does. And he's looking for big right hands, look for a left hand there as well. So I think this is going to be a decent watch. Ward, a good straight right hand there just came off it slightly we just dragged that that back foot forward a little bit there wall just want a little bit more turn on the on the hips and push off that back leg just keeps him in a safe distance and when he when he brings that back that right hand back jabbing to the body there warden and the body might be a good place to go for him because when you see Valau in his stance he has those elbows flared away from the rib cage those gloves quite high he just waits on the edge of range for now and then when he feels he's got a chance just flies in as he does there plants his feet and looks to get to work but ward was was covering the angles there look to the body with the right hand and he uses that short stature to his advantage here but i'll he clubs with the hooks rather than throwing straight shots you know, when he comes forward they're sort of ho hooping looping shots which means you got to you got to go back in straight lines and you also make sure you lift your chin up a little bit. Second round of Jonah Valau just sprinting to the centre of the ring. Was trainer Nigel Travis telling him in between rounds just to be patient, take his time. They've got six rounds here. Fainting there, Ward, and then stepping in, letting go with the right hand. But I think he's trying to get more power in that right hand there, Ward, but I think he's just leaning over a little bit too much, and I think that's where the has been over the counter there, off that move. That's a nice there from Ward. What you said in the first round there, just to maybe tag that body a little bit. He did that, he bent the legs as well before he threw that jab. It's much better. That was a good jab upstairs as well. You just saw the head there of Valau just rock back a little bit. As Ward just takes a, a little bit of a walk to change the angle. Again, looking for the jab to the body. Valau will try and rush him every now and again to try and get inside that superior reach and crisper jab of the Irishman. Being too expansive, not getting greedy, that was the word that Travis used in the corner between rounds. Again, there was just a little variation, the jab there to the chest, the head, and then give a little space for the right hand. That's a control here from Ward. Fellow needs to try, I know he likes to sit on, the, like you said, on the edge of distance and then just jump in with attacks, but I think here he needs to get a little bit lower. It's that rolling that head coming forward and put Ward under a little bit of pressure. Flau hasn't boxed since last May, so he's been out of the ring for a good while. And as I said, he's used that time to get down to cruiserweight. When you look at the size of him, he should never have been boxing no. a heavyweight. But he did have some good wins, a heavyweight, five and five, as I mentioned. And
an aggressive kind of fighter, a very game kind of fighter, but Ward's got him under control in this second round, which is what he was being asked to do. That's nice there for Ward there. He's a little faint, but he also fainted with the feet, but he looked down to the body there just to, and then threw a jab to the head. That's better from Palau, got in nice and close, finished on the, a right uppercut, which I think did get through, just snuck through the forearms. Weight to 200 pounds, the biggest jump in boxing. Looking for a right hand there, ripping the uppercut for Lau. He wasn't that far away with it as Ward was kind of jabbing off the back foot. That was lovely for Ward. I could just see you in the corner where you've got this video microphone to say exactly the same thing. Good stiff jab, wasn't it? And we got the perfect view of it, square onto it. Everything was correct about right. that. Well, the move before it, sometimes it's what you do around the punches that, that's impressive. And he fainted to the body, but he, 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 saw, he really sold the feint. And it just gives you a bit of time then to, do, to actually do some work. If you, if you, if you can master a, a real good feint. There's that jab to the body again. As you mentioned, Barry, he was a good amateur. Stephen Ward won a lot of Irish titles, five-time senior Irish champion, competed at two Commonwealth Games, got a silver in 2010. And you can see why, can you? Because he's happy just to pick. You know, he just picked the points up, and then you can see you know, he's really, really made for that computer-style scoring system. And the amateur game, he's just happy to pick away and I'll, I'll sometimes I'll wait you for the work. It's a solid right hand to the body. Flower again just managed to close the gap that time without anything coming back and then tried to place a right hand of his own. You've got to get just some movement in the shoulders of Flower when he's coming forward. Just to make, make Ward look for the tag as Ward is hitting him every time he, he lets that left hand go. There, just using a bit of physical strength, got hold of his man, turned him, dumped him into the ropes. Well, for what? Now you know what Valau's going to do every time. You no, know, you throw a punch, or certainly, but when you throw the right hand, he's usually going to fire back. You know, come in burst of attacks in straight lines. I think that, I'd, I'd either go really close to him chest to chest or just stay low and pivot on that front foot and he will go right past you. <laughs> that right hand to the body there, Ward. It was just slightly too close as he threw it. Valau just bundling him back towards the red corner. Howard Foster having a quick need to zone in. Most fighters will tell you that when they start to get those hands wrapped, though, some two, three punch combinations together. He was maybe a bit too open in the first round. That's what his, his trainer felt anyway. And since then, he's concentrated on the jab. In that previous round, he looked to put the right hand on the back of it a little bit more. It's a funny one with Ward, because I would... I know they tried to develop more power with, 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 with Steven, I understand why, but I, I tend to think you just work with what you've got. And I wouldn't be over adventurous ever with him. He's technically very good, and I, I just got it. As long as you're winning the rounds, just be happy with that. I, I, I really would believe that. I know it doesn't, it doesn't bode well for great TV and all that, you know, and it's not, not going to be any massively exciting fights. But something that we can all be you know, super excited. You, have, you, you know what your strengths are and, and stick to them. And for him, it's his discipline, his clean, straight shots. And he is looking to do a bit more work with that right hand. Nice bit of boxing about 30 seconds ago where he jabbed to the body, then up to the head, then through the straight right hand. Again, just stuttering in with that front foot. And there's just not much Falau can do with him. 
No, but that's what I mean for Ward. Ward's doing enough and he's winning the round, so he doesn't need to do any more. That, it's, it's on Valau to, to make the play now, because he's the one who's behind and the one who's struggling to hit the target. And then Ward's going to start putting his punches together when, when Valau's making the mistakes. If that happens. wasn't happening and he had no idea what was going to happen with his employment as did any of us really and well the despair was kind of easy to to register and very easy to understand but he's had a good build up to this one too because like so many people he's been furloughed from work so he's been able to train full time really during during lockdown Stephen Ward just looking to try and step in with that right hand again there and then put the left on the back of it. Just a quick blink of the eye there from Ward. I thought maybe the heads had just come together slightly. I don't think so. But he got caught when he tried to put his punches together in more than twos. So, uh, you know, stick to the formula that that's working for you. Well, if you're going to throw in, in threes and fours, you've got to, you've got to adjust those feet after you've after you thrown those shots. Especially against someone like Falao, you know, unless he's hurt, he's guaranteed he's going to throw once you finish throwing. Below pretty quiet with hasn't he? And it's all with the left hand with that jab. Well I'll try to come forward there as, as he does again, just as I spoke, but the right hand just collides with the forearms there of Ward. That's nice again there, little feint. Little feint that I look to the body when he's fully through that right hand over the top. <laughs> Fellow can't can break that jab before it's fully extended, and I can't see we can get close to the wall. <laughs> Even if you can't parry it with the right hand, it, every two gloves up on your head and walk forward, and they'll break it with the, with the gloves. Flowers. Never stopped trying here. He's always looked for a way through, and he continues to do so there. But the right hand that was aimed for the body got deflected by forearm and then the right hand upstairs was blocked also by Ward. There's certainly no lack of willing here from Flau, but what you need is somebody who's going to open out the bit, who's going to make a few mistakes, who's going to stand square and toe to toe and trade with him. And Ward showed just glimpses in the first round that he might be prepared. So between the two sixth and final rounds, that cruiserweight between Stephen Ward in the black shorts, white socks and Jonah Flau in the black shorts. Red Sox. Wood again, just on the jab there, just spearing through that jab. That's been his signature punch of the fight so far. And it's worked so well with Philip. He steps behind it as well, he stepped with it actually, I should say. But he does a little movement before. He just bent his legs there. Sometimes he looks to the body, sometimes he just tips the shoulder a little bit and he just disguises when it's going to arrive. <laughs> with Ward because his technique's really good but it doesn't seem it doesn't seem he can't get full purchase on the right hand like if he turns from the waist he does everything what, what you appear to be right but it's almost as if like the right hand shortens than the left hand and it won't fully extend oh, good shot there though he looks more effective when he throws it like that doesn't yeah, he yeah weirdly yeah it does he steps in and it's a kind of hook sweeping right hand almost, and he's trying to just guide it in behind the, the left glove there. If allow, he's, he's up the tempo in this round, though, Ward. He's putting his punches together and, and throwing more off them. Shot. Again, a looping right hand. Not the straight one, which you, I would always prefer. It's the looping right hand. That's, that's having more of an effect. 
Cloud just winging with a big overhand right there from way downtown. You've always got to watch out with him because he's got something for you. Always. You can't afford to get complacent. And as they said in the corner too, Ward, don't walk onto anything silly because it's a possibility. Again, that right hand and just looking for the uppercut on the inside there, Valau. Again there, Ward, with that lovely little feint before he's from the one two. Uh, he's boxed well, Stephen Ward. What he's hoping is that he'll get into British title mix or get a British title shot in the next 12 months. It's a very competitive division. Yeah, it has it been domestically for a really long time. Richard Rearport is British champion. He's got to defend against the Tuba. Chris Gordon Smith, Commonwealth champion, box during fight camp. He's back in camp. William Smith at the moment. I know that, so there's something in the offing for him. Possibly, hopefully. Tommy McCarthy could have a big fight coming up soon as well. What I hear is correct, and Lawrence O'Coley too. That world title shot could be on its way, so domestic scene. It's not so domestic. <laughs> it's not still domestic. Exactly, everybody thriving. So that goes the referee Howard Foster's scorecard. He scores the contest at 59 points to 55 points in favour of your winner. From Belfast, Northern Ireland, Stephen, the Quiet Man.